products are so massive that it seems everything the company does is destined to succeed. But it doesn't take much digging to find a trail of failures and false starts. Even in recent years, there are examples of products that seemed great but never resonated with consumers, and some that seemed so destined for failure, it's hard to imagine why any company would have brought them to market. Here are seven of Apple's failed products. Number seven, Quick Take Camera. Back in 1994, Apple was a pioneer in digital photography with the Quick Take Camera. Despite its groundbreaking nature, the Quick Take's photos were limited in usability. It had a resolution of 640 x 480 pixels at 0.3 megapixels. Back then, this was okay but best suited for GeoCities homepages, a web hosting service that allowed users to create and publish websites for free and to browse user-created websites by their theme or interest. Sadly, Apple discontinued the line after just three years, missing out on the potential success during the digital point-and-shoot era. The arrival of iPhones and other smartphones later replaced traditional digital cameras. The Quick Take's demise can be attributed to Steve Jobs' streamlining strategy, reducing Apple's product lines from 15 to 4, where the Quick Take became one of its casualties. Number 6. Cards App In 2011, during the iPhone 4S event, Apple introduced a feature called Cards. It allowed owners of iOS devices to design and send personalized cards without the hassle of going to a stationery store or searching for stamps in their junk drawers. While it was quick, easy, and boasted high-quality cards, the service didn't seem to gain much traction. In fact, I personally only know one person who uses it. According to Hayes Roth, Chief Marketing Officer of Lander Associates, great brands create a personal and emotional connection with their customers. The idea of receiving something tangible, made by Apple, has an inherent emotional appeal that people desire. Despite the potential emotional value it can offer, Cards hasn't seen widespread adoption. It still exists, and with the approaching holiday season, there might be a slight increase in usage. However, to truly succeed, it needs more users to justify its continued existence. You know what? Inspired by the idea of creating a personal connection, you should send your loved ones a card right now. Even though cards may not have taken off as expected, it's still a thoughtful way to connect with loved ones. Number 5. FaceTime Open Source FaceTime was announced at the 2010 Worldwide Developers Conference keynote. During the demo, Steve Jobs stated that Apple was working toward making FaceTime an open standard. This was a huge announcement from a company not known for its willingness to play well with others. The open standard would give other companies access to FaceTime. And since FaceTime itself is based on open standards, Steve Jobs announced that Apple would be going to the standards bodies the next day to make it an industry standard. It's been years since the initial thought, but FaceTime is still an Apple-only experience. So, why did it fail? Apple is, for lack of better words, quite on its plans, or lack thereof, to open-source FaceTime. Open-source evangelist Jonathan Schwartz, former CEO of Sun Microsystems, believes that Apple had hoped that FaceTime would be a huge hit and that making it an open standard would undercut other video calling technologies. Schwartz noted that companies drive an open standard when they want to disrupt from below. Alas, that didn't happen for FaceTime. Number 4. iPod Hi-Fi In 2006, Apple made a foray into the iPod speaker dock market with the introduction of a high-quality speaker called the Hi-Fi. While the speaker was undeniably impressive, it suffered from a significant drawback, its steep price tag. Priced at $350, it couldn't garner the same level of attention and popularity that the iPods, meant to be paired with it, enjoyed. Number 3. iPhone App Texas Hold M Between 2006 and 2011, Apple developed a pretty solid poker app for the iPhone. Surprisingly, it was the only game app that Apple had ever released on its own. Despite some players eventually losing their virtual money, attempting to outwit the computer, the game garnered positive feedback for its solid performance and entertaining gameplay. It initially debuted on the iPod in 2006 and became one of the first apps available when Apple launched the App Store in 2008. However, to the disappointment of its fans, Apple suddenly removed the app from the store in November 2011, leaving users puzzled. The primary reason behind its failure was Apple's decision to stop updating the app, leading to its eventual disappearance from the App Store. Similar to their plans to open-source FaceTime, Apple has remained tight-lipped about the reasons behind pulling Texas Hold'em from the market, leaving users in the dark about its fate. 
Number 2. iPad Socks The weirdest Apple products to take up space in the company's retail stores were the iPod Socks. The one-size-fits-all cozies were actually tiny iPod cases available in a rainbow of colors. And, while the socks became a joke among even the most hardcore Apple users, the little protective pieces of cloth persevered. Released in November 2004, they stayed on shelves until September of 2012, which gave us eight years of wondering whether Apple was trolling us with footwear. There are a host of reasons why this one failed. One speculation is that the little knitted tchotchkes were just an odd Apple attempt at branding. I guess companies are always looking at ways to extend their brand. Any company that tries is usually going to push the envelope a little bit. Number 1. Apple's Bluetooth headset and not the AirPods Between 2007 and 2009, Apple introduced a not-so-cleverly named product, the Apple Bluetooth headset. However, its lack of a catchy name might not have been the only reason for its short-lived existence, which lasted less than two years. It's possible that the headset got overshadowed by the immense attention surrounding the original iPhone announcement. Let's face it, that event was all about the iPhone, and other details might have been easily forgotten. Despite boasting a convenient charging dock, the Apple Bluetooth headset came with a hefty price tag of $130, which drained the pockets of potential customers. In comparison, there were other headsets available on the market at a more affordable price with better features, making it a tough sell for Apple. One of the major reasons behind its failure was its steep cost. Additionally, being lost amidst the media frenzy surrounding the iPhone launch didn't help its chances either. To make matters worse, the headset received criticism for its sound quality, with Ars Technica describing it as sounding like a bowl of Rice Krispies sprinkled with crystal meth for your ear, due to the unpleasant snapping, crackling, and popping sounds accompanying its use. In the end, the Apple Bluetooth headset couldn't compete effectively, and its shortcomings led to its eventual discontinuation from the market. And that's our list. Thanks Innovation Nation crew for watching. Do you know any other products even outside Apple we missed? Let us know in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos.